The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. But I know that in football, any team that is playing the other team always on the offensive somehow somehow wins if they keep playing you half field half field half field half field you're always the people defending and they're always coming somehow somehow ball will enter somehow somehow eh? <laughs> there's an arsenal fan there <laughs> oh you're chelsea oh i didn't know Save Johnny or Chelsea. Because <laughs> like, if you're in Chelsea, you will never see the kingdom of God. <laughs> I said to him, this, this football is not serious. Bro. <laughs> he said, if you're in Chelsea, God will never forgive you. <laughs> football matter it calls for prayer <laughs> in ministry you are in the offensive because you're always going out you're always speaking the word you're always casting out devils you're always healing the sick you're always ministering to people you're always getting people say you are in the offensive ministry keeps you in the offensive you keep winning over the devil. You keep advancing the kingdom of God. You keep pulling people out of darkness into light. You keep depopulating the kingdom of darkness. Especially when you are given to the practice of ministry. And the practice of ministry is where the real ministry happens. So you must be physically there. One who was with us all the time. One who went in and out with us. Now don't forget that none of them knew he was going to die. So they were not doing something to gain something. Matthias was choosing to replace Judas equally. Did not know Judas was going to die. But this is just the mark of a disciple. He is present in all meetings. He's always in the meetings. He's always in the mission field. So we're not talking about someone who just knows the teaching. You know the teaching. But beyond the teaching, you are involved in the practice. One of the things about disciples is that they can repeat what you are saying verbatim. A disciple is one that can repeat what you say verbatim. Your disciple swallows what you teach. Your disciple is so committed that he can even preempt what you are about to say and say it before you say in the Old Testament, virtually all the writings of the Old Testament, Moses, Joshua, you know, if you observe very well, all those books were not written by, 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 by the names. Moses was not the only person who wrote the five books. Joshua is not the only person who wrote the book of Joshua. It was their words. Because how you will know, oh, yeah, that it was not Moses alone who wrote. Then Moses says, and Moses died. Huh? and Joshua was old and stricken in age and slept with the fathers in the book of Joshua so most times they will ask you who really wrote it because if it's Joshua who wrote it he wouldn't be writing about his death if it's Moses who wrote it he wouldn't be writing about his death in fact Moses will write and say Moses was the meekest man no that wasn't Moses writing well, they had what we call secondary authors. Okay, if you're, if, you're, if you're used to writing books like I write books all the time, you're not the only person who writes. You have other people writing with you. You supply materials and they work with you to make the materials, put them together, edit, the, edit them, make sure all your thoughts are carried, give you to proofread, you proofread the correct, they do all the grammatical checks and all the punctuations and then it is put together. You read one more time and approve and it goes to the press. 
So every writer has secondary writers. And the secondary writers of the Bible were disciples. Moses had disciples who were writing with him. Joshua had disciples who were writing with him. Secondary authors. Paul's letters also were like that. But their names will be there. But it is not only them that did the job. They have a team that works with them. Definitely when we write our books, even in this ministry, I have a team that works with me. I do. Some will proofread, some will do corrections, some will check grammar, some will check vocabulary, some will check scripture to make sure all the scriptures written are exactly the way they are. Some will check the Greek and the Hebrew words to make sure there's no typo on those words. You know, all that is done. A whole lot of work is put together to bring out a book. Every author does that. Okay, so they had secondary authors. So that's why after Moses died, his disciples completed the book. Same thing with Joshua. They wrote it, but they put his name on it. Am, am I communicating at all? So who is that disciple? He is present enough to know everything you have said. A disciple is present enough with you to know everything you have said. They had those teachings by heart. That's why upon, upon resurrection, they became witnesses. Luke 24, 48, Jesus' disciples became his witnesses upon resurrection. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall be witnesses. You shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. They were preaching the life of Jesus without a written document. They rehearsed the life of Jesus without a written document. So that a look can get the account from those who just saw Jesus. Gather the account together and communicate. Today is easy. We have the teachings recorded. Broadcasted real time. Right now I'm teaching. I'm on radio. I'm on TV. I'm on the internet. Social media. All real time. And those messages are stored for you to go and listen again. But they didn't have all of that. So you have to be physically present. And they also didn't have the science of typewriting like we have today. So you have to use your memory. You have to scribble it upon the science of their day. And all of that was part of discipleship. So they were physically present when Jesus was teaching. Why was it important to be physically there? Because discipleship is what you hear and what you see. It is important to be physically there because discipleship is what you hear and what you see. And that is why all campus coordinators are discipled by me. All our campus coordinators, globally, they are discipled by me continually and they in turn are helping me to disciple the members of their campuses. So there's a multiplication of discipleship going on across the board all over the world. I'm discipling in some who are discipling in some who are discipling in some. So there's discipleship ongoing. But discipleship, like I said, is beyond teaching. You must belong like those online who don't belong to any assembly. You cannot enjoy the practice of ministry online. So we go beyond online. We create campuses which enables you now an opportunity to interfere with people's lives. To pray for people. Counsel people. Build people. Supervise their notes. Make sure what they hear me teach is what they wrote. Take them with you for evangelism. They go now in the practice of what I'm teaching and implement it in evangelism. Raising disciples. Praying for the sick. Casting out devils. Then we come back to the campus. We pray for one another. We minister to one another in the things of the spirit. We walk in love. We are offended. We refuse to take the offense. It's part of it. We are offended. We offend others. Not deliberately. But anywhere human beings are, offenses are bound to come. So we get offended. We refuse to take the offense. The reason for the love walk is because offenses will be there. There will be no love walk if there will be no offenses. The love walk is supposed to insulate you from being offended. You only get offended when you walk out of love. The moment you walk out of love, you will get offended. But as long as you are in love, you won't be offended. Oh yeah. You won't be offended. You just overlook things. Things will happen, you take them in your stride. You pretend not to notice them. 
You keep advancing the course of Christ because the mission of offense is to distract you from the tangent, to take your eyes from focus and get you distracted. And if you are not careful, you get into offense, you get into bitterness, then you get into serious offense, you're full of bitterness, and once you are in bitterness and offense, you are no more hearing the spirit of God. No more, nothing is entering again. You become stunted in your growth spiritually. You become stunted. But all of this is to expose us to develop our work work, love work, to develop our maturity. That's why you have to belong to a physical campus. You have to belong to a local church. And some people heard me say, you have to belong to a local church who we are in churches where they are not taught the word of God where they are not growing spiritually, they followed me online and began to grow spiritually. Then they heard me say, you must belong to a local church. They now go back to that church where they were not growing. And they said, Dr. Damina said, we must belong to a local church. No, I didn't say you should go and dwell in the congregation of the dead. When I say local church, I mean a place where you will hear what you are hearing from me continuous. So that this growth that has started is not stunted. You can't feed from the table of Christ and feed from the table of devils. When I say you must belong to a local church, what I mean is you must belong to a campus. You must look, look for a campus. If you're in America, look for a campus, a power city campus. If there's none in your city, give yourself, let's train you so you start one for other people to benefit from your obedience. If you're in London, you're in Canada, you're in America, you're in India, you're in South Africa, you're in Ghana, Cameroon, Sierra Leone, you are in Liberia, you are in Cotonou, you are in Togo, all the nations, and you're following me right now online, and you've followed me for one year, and you have not seen the need to start a campus and help people grow, and you yourself grow in ministerial experience, is either you are not understanding what I'm teaching, or you are hearing 150. That's right. Because when you really understand what ministry is, it's beyond just teaching and taking notes and being blessed. Dr. Damina is a blessing. Dr. Damina is a blessing. Is a blessing. I cannot miss his teaching. You yourself, you are not a blessing. But Dr. Damina is a blessing. No, it is blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed I'm a blessing to you. You are blessed. You are a blessing to others who are blessed. And I a blessing to others. That is how we multiply ministry until the nations of the earth are rich. If I'm communicating, can I have a powerful amen? amen. So in case you've been following my teaching and I keep emphasizing the local church, I'm not saying you should go back to that church where you were not growing. That church where you stayed 10 years, you can't explain John 3.16. That church where you've been since you were born and you didn't know what it means to be born again. You were in that church paying tight, sowing seed, tapping unction to function and you never functioned. Till you came to where you are not tapping anything. Because you don't need to tap. You are the tap. Christ in you. So now we are teaching you your realities. Now you are growing. The proof that you understand is that suddenly you want to now be a fountain for others to drink from. You want to start a campus beginning from your house and evangelize your community. Bring them into your house and then you start Bible study. You start discipleship. You create an enabling environment. We train you, you train others. You and the group begin to grow together. You pray for one another. That is the church and that is what I mean by belong to a local church. Because you will hurt yourself, you will wound. You go wound. If you follow my teachings and then you go and join a congregation where what they teach is opposite of what I teach, it is you that is at risk. It is you because you are combining two different things that will confuse you. If your eye is single, your body will be full of light. You can't have double eyes. Some say, but that is the church where God born again. The fact that you are born again there doesn't mean that is where you will grow. The man that gets you born again is not your spiritual father. Your spiritual father is the person that builds doctrine into you. Is the person that builds the revelation knowledge into you. Paul, Paul became the father of Timothy. But it was not Paul that got Timothy born again. 
Timothy was already born again in Acts chapter 16. It was because he was born again and they saw the hunger in him that they recommended him to Paul. But Paul built doctrine into him and Paul called Timothy my son. So sonship is the DNA of ministry and it's a product of doctrine, teaching, teaching, teaching that will build you up where you grow and become a blessing to others. I'm teaching good this morning. We're talking about the practice of ministry. We're talking about practical ministry. We're talking about practical ministry. So they were physically present with Jesus. So discipleship has to be both knowledge and experience. Knowledge and experience. We're so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.